Mr. Speaker, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good to be with you. Let me start with Baltimore. You said the other day what Baltimore needs is more jobs, more opportunity, that this isn't about throwing more government money at the problem. And you were responding a little bit to the president's criticism, saying he felt as if Congress was holding up his part of the agenda. But when you say more jobs and more opportunity, how? How do you do it? Fix a broken tax code that encourages more investment in the United States, uh, creates more opportunities in communities like this. Uh, how about we find a way to educate more of America's kids? Uh, half of our kids uh, get an education. More than half get a diploma, but they get a diploma they can't read. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, the schools in these inner cities, uh, these families are trapped in, in bad schools that don't provide a real education, and, uh, and look what you get. Chuck, what we have here is 50 years of liberal policies that have not worked to help the very people that we want to help. It's time to look at all these programs and determine what's working and what isn't. Uh, because until we start to find programs uh, that actually work mm -hmm. and we provide opportunities, more opportunities, and a better education, we're going to have more of the same. What works? What's working? Educating more of our kids. All right, so how do you do it? That work. takes government money. Improving schools in if, Baltimore, if, does if it not? Solve, if, if money was going to solve the education problem, we would have solved it decades ago. Uh, money is not the issue here. It's how do we provide these kids with an education? You know, kids are in school 9% of the time between birth and age 18. 9% mm -hmm. of the time. It means 91% of the time they're at home or they're out in their communities. Now, if they're our kids, they get reinforcement at home, we take them places. Uh, it, it reinforces what they're learning in school. But if you're poor and you're in a rotten neighborhood, guess what? Probably don't have that, re, uh, that reinforcement at home or in the community. And so things like boys clubs, girls clubs, uh, things like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, are critically important in these communities. Uh, as is trying to reach into these homes and to help uh, their parents get an education because they likely didn't get one either. This is the, the foundation, I think, of what needs to happen if we're serious about providing more opportunities. Is the, uh, do you believe we're in a national crisis when it comes to the relationship between African Americans and law enforcement? I do. I think that uh, if you look at what's happened uh, over the course of the last year, you just got to scratch your head. Right. And when you hear about uh, uh, these charges that have been brought uh, in. Now charging homicide for Brittany, uh, right? I mean, public servants uh, should not violate the law. And if these charges are true, uh, it's outrageous and it's unacceptable. Body cameras the answer, or, or one of the answers? I think uh, most departments around uh, the country are moving toward body cameras. I think the states, uh, if they want to require it, they're more happy to do so. But federal clearly, government, you, you think federal government should chip in? To help with this? Uh, we've got a lot of police grants that we already have on the books that can be used for this. Why not? You're likely to be in charge of the Republican convention in some form. You were the last time, whatever the title they give you, chairman or whatever it is. Um, Supreme Court this week heard the, heard the same-sex marriage arguments. Uh, if the Supreme Court rules how a lot of people expect them to rule, basically legalizing same-sex marriage for all 50 states, do you anticipate gaveling in a platform of the Republican Party at the Cleveland Convention, your home state of Ohio, that is still going to have a platform calling for a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage? I don't know what's going to happen to the Republican con uh, Convention, but listen, uh, I believe in traditional marriage, uh, but I also respect the views of others. I'll let the court uh, make their decision, but at the end of the day, the states are, are well equipped uh, to deal with this. They've been dealing with it, and they should continue to deal with you it. You didn't sign on to the brief on this one. Mitch McConnell did. A lot of your fellow members of Congress, you did, why didn't you sign on to this legal brief? I have no idea. <laughs> probably because I wasn't asked. You if you had been asked, you would have signed on to I probably brief. would have signed on to it. You probably would have yeah. done it. Let's talk about uh, health care, another Supreme Court issue that may be thrown in your lap. Um, you have your plan B ready? Uh, not yet. I think uh, our three House chairmen are working on this. Uh, we're beginning the process of uh, working with the uh, Senate Republicans because I think it's important that we're on the same page in terms of what our response is. Uh, if, in fact, the court rules uh, against the Obama administration. And that the exchanges are not. Do you feel like you have an obligation to figure out how to keep these people insured? Yeah, I think, it, it, listen, uh, they signed up under a law that I didn't agree with, no Republican agreed with, uh, but uh, they signed up and uh, nobody wants to see uh, those people hurt. But at the end of the day, 
Uh, Obamacare is not good for America's health care system. It's not good for the country. And uh, we still want to repeal Obamacare and replace it with a patient-centered uh, system uh, that, uh, that empowers people and empowers doctors, not empowers a bureaucracy. You made some dire predictions about health care. 2014, you said fewer people would have health insurance. According to plenty of surveys, more people have health insurance today than they did before. It went down from 17, the uninsured rate went down from 17 percent to just under 12 percent. Um, you said it would destroy jobs. The first year it was implemented, the country added 3 million jobs. Well, why were your dire predictions made it harder, Obamacare made it harder for employers to hire people. The economy expands, and as a result, you're going to have more employees because businesses have to. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you can ask any employer uh, in, in America and ask them whether Obamacare uh, has made it harder for them to hire employees, and they'll tell you yes, because it's a fact. Uh, when you look at, yeah, you know why there's more people uh, insured? Because a lot more people are on Medicaid. Uh, and giving, you know, we expanded Medicaid in a big way, and giving people a Medicaid insurance it's almost like giving them nothing uh, because uh, there are, you can't find a doctor that will see Medicaid patients. And so where do they end up? The same place they used to end up, in the emergency room. So you don't feel like this is, you don't look at Obamacare as at all having any success? Uh, it's not working and it's not good for the country. And it certainly isn't good uh, for America's patients. Let me move to, to Congress. There are, some people have called it, there's some green shoots. You guys are passing some bills, not big, not, not big ones that are high profile but s some significant things. Why do you think suddenly you've been passing bills that the president's been signing? I don't know. Uh, I think part of it is, is that we decided we were gonna hit the ground running. And, uh, and you know, we've had uh, twice as many bills on the floor as the first three months of the last Congress. Uh, committees have been doing a lot more. Uh, the Senate has decided that they're actually gonna move things across the, the floor of the Senate. And as a result, members feel engaged on both sides of the Capitol and on both sides of the aisle. I haven't seen members uh, in this good of a mood in the last five or six years. It, it does seem to, now is it fair to say we shouldn't really judge you until you have to do some big stuff? Debt ceiling, you're still gonna have to deal with that. Oh, we have, we, a lot have, of, we have a lot of big things. Transportation, uh, figuring out how to fund that thing. Right. Um, should we be holding off on giving you any kind of passing grade yet? Well, listen, I, I, what you see is what you get. And uh, so far, this first 100 days of the new Congress, we've gotten off to a good start. And whether it was our plan to, to balance the budget, which now has passed the House, uh, uh, the Senate passed a bill, we have a conference report, and I expect the Senate to approve their budget. Uh, whether it was getting the Keystone Pipeline through the House and Senate on the President's desk, uh, preventing uh, veteran suicides. Or the President called for taxing uh, college savings plans, we moved a bill to expand college savings plans, all of it in a bipartisan way. But there's a lot more it work Sounds like to you're do. then picking your, you think you're picking your topics better, more carefully, that you're looking for ways that you know some Democrats would want in? Most of these bills were moved in the last Congress on a bipartisan basis through the House, but went nowhere in the Senate. And, uh, and, and why not go there? Well, I'm not looking to pick fights just to be picking fights. Our members came here uh, to listen to the American people, make their priorities our priorities. And we've done that. We look at cybersecurity, uh, you look at uh, collecting uh, foreign intelligence uh, to keep Americans safe. There's a lot of other bipartisan bills that are uh, underway, a lot of discussion about trade. Uh, I wish it was more bipartisan well, than, let's what, talk than about what trade. it was. It's actually you and the president, and the president had a bunch of House Democrats over to the White House. Are you going to need Hillary Clinton's help uh, to get trade done? You know, she's, she's I have a look, the Democratic Party is led by two people right now. The, their nominee potentially to be in her and, and the president. He clearly is doing, trying to lobby House members. You're going to need her help on this? The president needs trade promotion authority to continue uh, to try to get an agreement with the Asians on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Hillary Clinton was for tra trade permission, promotion authority. Hillary Clinton is for the trade bill with uh, the Asians. She just won't say so. And the fact is, is the president needs her help in order to get Democrat votes in the House and Senate to get this passed. You think some House Democrats look at the split and think, ooh, she's on the ballot, I better... Every Democrat leader in the Congress is opposed to the President's position. Now listen, we've got a majority here in the House and the Senate, but we can't do this by ourselves. 
And we're going to carry the bulk of the votes uh, to get trade promotion authority done for the president. And because th this trade promotion authority, uh, every president over the last 50 years has had this. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why uh, President Obama shouldn't have it either, because trade is good for our country. Uh, but uh, she can't sit on the sidelines uh, and let the, the, the president swing in the, the wind here. So you think she needs to be more engaged? I do. Issue. Speaking of her, Benghazi Committee, you uh, recently sort of accepted the idea that it's going to extend into 2016. Let me give you a little history here. The Watergate Committee lasted over a year. Warren Commission, it was less than a year. Iran-Contra hearings, less than a year. Hurricane Katrina, five months. Benghazi's now going to be two years. Did it really, it, do you see why it looks political if you extend it into the presidential year? I don't want to extend it in the presidential year. I wish it was over last year. But when the administration stonewalls, stonewalls, and stonewalls, you have no choice. I only have one goal here, and that is the truth about what happened before Benghazi, the night there are of Benghazi. A lot of reports. And there are a lot of reports. What's but, unknown? Well, how about the 4,000 documents uh, that we just got from mm -hmm. the State Department that we never had seen before? How about uh, the documents uh, that the, the uh, State Department turned over uh, from Hillary's server that we had never gotten before. Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't even know that Hillary Clinton had uh, this server in her home if it weren't for the Benghazi Committee. And, and if they would cooperate and turn over documents, we could have had this over a long time ago. But they're doing everything from Secretary Clinton yeah. uh, to the White House to the State Department, doing everything they can to lock down our access to the documents and they're locking down access to the American people about the truth of what happened. There's speculation you might throw it to a vote, that you may need to have a vote in all of the House to subpoena her server. Is that something we, you... Listen, we don't want her server. You don't want her server. We don't want her server, but we think the server ought to be turned over to the Inspector General at the State Department. I think they're in the best position to go through this server, determine what documents are public and what aren't, uh, and then take a look at those public documents. Congressional dysfunction, the idea that Washington doesn't work. And we just discussed you've been getting some stuff done. But when you talk to people outside of Washington, they'll bring up some things to me. Let me ask you, do you think there's too many special interests here in Washington? Too many lobbyists? Everybody's a special interest. When I get home, everybody I talk to has their own <laughs> interest. And some but of the organized special interest can kill things like that. Look at import-export bank, look at, every, look at the way the health care bill is written. Every American, every American belongs to dozen special interest groups, whether they want to or not. You know, if they're older, they, they, so you don't uh, think it's a they get represented by the is. AARP. All right? If they're business people, they get yeah. represented by a number of business groups. You know, if they're environmentally conscious, you know, they're get represented by a number of environmental groups. Uh, the competition, the competition of ideas is what matters. And there's a lot of good ideas and a lot of bad ideas that flow through here, but it's a, in my view, a, a misconception of the so-called special interest. Gerrymandering. Bad for uh, your Congress or an acceptable way to do business? You can call it ger gerrymandering, but in Ohio, the Democrats had the, the pencil in their hand for 50 years. Now the Republicans have had it uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, our turn to draw the lines. It, tit for tat, you don't mind it? Listen, at the end of the day, they've you don't got think to pass, there's a better way it's to got do to this? pass constitutional muster, and, uh, and it does. Too much money in politics? We spend more money on antacids than we do on politics. So you're saying special interest, gerrymandering, money, not a problem. At the end of the day, I'm responsible to my constituents for what I do here. Not who I listen to, all right? Not how I run my campaign. Uh, it's based on how I vote and what I do here. And frankly, the, the Congress on both sides of the aisle. I'd say 95% of the people here are mm -hmm. good, honest, decent people uh, trying to represent uh, their constituents uh, to the best of their ability. Uh, we live in an imperfect uh, political system. Uh, we, we live uh, in a, an imperfect democracy. Yeah. Uh, but as bad as it is, guess what? It's better than any place else in the world. Let me have a little bit of fun with you on presidential politics. You have made it clear you're a big fan of Jeb Bush, but you haven't endorsed. Why? Well, I'm not going to endorse anybody. I'm a big fan of John Kasich's, too. Uh, I'm, I know most of these uh, mm -hmm. uh, people out there thinking about. But you think one president. of those two ought to be the nominee? Uh, but uh, I'm not going to get into. I'm not going to endorse anybody. Right, I don't want to hurt anybody. All right? so why, why would let I me throw out a few that? names. When I say Hillary Clinton, what do you say? Uh, Give me a word or phrase. First thing that comes to mind. I, 
Uh, listen, I'm not going to have a word for her. Yeah? Former Secretary of State. Yeah? Anything on Scott Walker? What do you think of him? Well, he's done a good job as governor. You think first-term senators uh, will make the best president? We'll see. You're not, you're I'm not, not going to get in the middle Cruz, of Cruz, Paul, I'm not Rubio. Get in the middle of they this. got enough Listen, experience. We got we got a big field. It'll sort itself out over the next year. Good luck to all of them. Why do you talk up Jeb though more than any others? Uh, Listen, we've been friends for a long time. I think he did a great job as governor of uh, Florida, and uh, I think he can talk about Republican principles in a way uh, that uh, appeals to a broad section of America. And if he but doesn't, I think, but you realize but if I he think, doesn't get there. But I think John Kasich can do the same thing. He's done a great job as governor of Ohio. If Jeb Bush doesn't get there, there's going to be one issue that he doesn't get there, and it's immigration. You're going to look back if Hillary Clinton's president of the United States on January 20th, 2017. I, it'll I, be because I, of immigration. I, 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 don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it at all. What, what, what Jeb Bush was for uh, is an immigration system that works. Where we secure our borders, we're able to enforce our laws, and we have an orderly process uh, for, for dealing with those that are here without documents. Uh, most Republicans, I believe, are for that. Then bring that bill to the floor. You know, if the president would make my life so miserable when it comes to immigration, we'd have had immigration on the, on the floor. Every time he goes off on his own and does things that even he said he wasn't allowed to do, he said it 22 times he wasn't allowed to expand. You, you could have tried to pass a bill before he did the executive action, though. 22 times the president said he couldn't do what he did. Mm -hmm. And every time he'd lean out there, all he did was create an environment that made it almost impossible uh, for us to do real immigration reform here. So. All right. Speaker Barron, I'll leave it there. Thank nice you, sir. Let's thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here, and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.